this message today will be a blessing to you. It'll be one of encouragement and one that will give us insight as to how we can grow close, closer to the Lord and stay in faith and be faithful in the things that we know. I was looking at it as I was writing uh, this message. Um, I was telling uh, Deacon Thomas all week long, I'll have a piece of paper and I'll jot down a few things and I'll jot down a few things and then I go back and I put them on different pieces of paper. So I have to go back and find the piece of papers that I wrote them on when it came and then I put it all and combine it into the message. And so um, that works for me sometimes. They don't always work that way, but that's the way it was this week. The Lord would lay something on my heart and I would do it. Then this morning about four o'clock, I thought he was changing the message. I woke up about three and I could not get back to sleep and I had gone to bed late and worked outside and I knew I was tired, but for whatever reason, um, and it was his reasoning and he wanted me to pray. So I, that's what I did. I, I just said, Lord, I'm not going to fight this. If you call me at this moment to pray for whatever situation it is. And as I'm listening to the Holy Spirit, he tells me, now these things I'm giving you to pray about, I'm going to do them. And then I don't want you to talk about them. First time the Lord ever said that to me. He says, you're going to see it happen but I don't want you to testify of it. And I don't want you to tell anybody that you prayed about this situation. He said, because you're not going to take the glory from me in this. This is between you. It's sort of like between me and him, but I'm going to show you. He said, but through this, the only thing I want you to do is to teach others how to pray. So I said, yes, Lord. So for about an hour, I just prayed before the Lord, but he did not change the message. But I praise and thank the Lord for our time together and for our fellowship together. And so after that, uh, about an hour, six o'clock, I just decided, let me just go ahead and just get up. Cause you know, <laughs> it was just, <laughs> fix me a cup of coffee. And so I've been up since then, but this message really should be a Bible study. And I say that because in a Bible study, you get to a uh, chance to interact and you get a chance to ask questions. And sometimes, when the Lord has given us a word, there are those maybe who may be at the level who can receive it because they have studied maybe in that area. And then there are those who want to ask questions to get more of an understanding. So I'm praying today that if you have a question that you will write it down and at any time that you feel like it, you can call me or text me and say, look, this part right here, I didn't quite understand that. So can you give me a little more insight to that? And can we uh, discuss this a little bit? Because I want you to be encouraged. And, and I believe the Lord led me in th into this area of the word because I was listening to the news and there are some mental problems that are having, that are taking place around us in, in, in the lives of people because this thing with the virus has been going on so long and they're losing their jobs, they don't have money, they can't get back in their businesses. And so there are some mental things that are happening in their lives, uh, in their families, and uh, it, it, it's, it's just not good. Um, there's some issues, but we, we know that those issues can have a very bad effect on people even some young Christians, some, some who are not really rooted and grounded in the word of God, then some that maybe are not as strong in the word that maybe they've been a Christian or believer for a long time, but they can also question some things. But I went to John the 12th chapter and I was spiritually taken from John the 12th chapter, uh, the 24th through the 25th verse. And I'm going to use the title today, Fruit That Pleases God. Fruit That Pleases God. 12 and 24 says, very, verily, which means truly, truly, I say this to you, except, except a corn, a kernel of wheat fall into the ground and die. 
it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now, Jesus is here talking to his disciples and his followers. If you have your Bibles, it's written in red, Bible, it's written in red and he's giving them a language that they can understand. They knew about farming. They knew about seeds. They knew about the earth. They knew about the ground. They, they knew about the harvest. So he, he says he gives them a physical law in the form of an analogy. And he says, uh, he's telling them and teaching them this is really the working of the law of life. This is really the law of life. Um, I said they all knew about a grain of wheat. And they knew that it contained within itself the germs of life. But if it never was, it never fell into the ground and it was never broken, it would remain alone. Just remain alone. Not really alive, not really living unless it fell into the ground. And once it fell into the ground, then the germ of life, or we call it the life germ, would burst forth. And that one single grain, just one, one single grain in its own death would bring life first with the blade and then with the stalk and then the ear of corn. So the death then was the true release of life for it released the inner life power. I, I had looked at... um. When I was writing this this week, I looked, but I didn't copy the song. I didn't copy the lyrics because I wasn't going to give them anyway. But, you know, uh, James Brown used to have a song called Soul Power. And I didn't write the, the lyrics down. But I thought about this uh, when I was writing notes and, and doing the notes that, um, see, the, that, that husk that is around that seed covers it and keeps it in captivity keeps the real life from coming forth is held in captive and this is but if it dies if it's broken it can receive life power not soul power but it can receive life power and it can multiply itself in more grains that would clothe the whole field with the harvest of much fruit. So Christ is teaching here life. He, he says that life comes from death. And Jesus teaches that, that only by his death. See these disciples where he's telling them that, you know, I am uh, I'm building them a kingdom. He's establishing a kingdom. He's doing these things in, in, in the earth, but here they are. They see it in a whole different world. They see it in the, in, again in that soulish realm. You know, you're going to build your kingdom here, and we're all going to have a different spot and position, and here we are. And the Lord said, no, I'm going to die. I'm going to the cross. I'm going into the earth. And he says, because he teaches them that only by his death, only by his death, that he would be glorified in salvation and of men and that the honors, and he would receive the honors and rewards of heaven. He said, that's the only way that life is going to spring forth out of death out of death so the grains of wheat are first buried in the earth and they lose their form i know you've seen a seed uh as it is put in the earth and it and the moisture uh gathers around it and pretty soon that husk that's on the outside of it begins to crack open and after a while you see 
uh, what's going to eventually become the root uh, go down, and then he, then you see the top of it. It loses its form. Yeah. It loses its form. See, that's the brokenness that God is calling us to. He says, go, give. He said, let this life lose your life. Lose that, that being alone. Lose that being separated. Lose that so you can really bring forth life and produce fruits. So Jesus said to himself, he says, uh, it must be with me as the same it has to be with you. <laughs> He says to himself, I must be crucified before the gospel can be preached to all the nations. He says, I must be crucified before the fullness of the Gentiles can come. But if I have died once, once and risen again from the dead, then shall you see an abundance of fruit. You will see the abundance of fruit. Think about that for a moment. Jesus going to the cross. Him preparing himself because he knew that by his death, by his burial, by his resurrection, that there would be new life. And that new life is available to each one of us. That's amazing. But he says that we have to take up the cross and follow him. He says that we are crucified, buried, okay. and, we, and we rose with him. So now we go to verse 25. And verse 25 reads, He that loveth his life shall lose it. Now, this life he's talking about, he's talking about self-life. He that loveth his self-life, and he that hateth his life, his self-life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. <laughs> wow. You mean I've got to hate my life? Jesus said, yes. The answer is yes. This verse applies to the same seed illustration that there is or there was in verse 24. He offers that same wheat analogy to illustrate two meanings, death, death to self is the way to life. Or you remain alone. Death to self is the way to life. Jesus' death led to his glory. It led to his glory. Not only is this true for Jesus, it's also true for those who will follow him. Those who want to follow him. Those who want to be uh, led by him. Those who believe in him. And those who want to produce fruit that pleases God. What's our purpose? We are here to bless, to magnify, and to please God. So why go through the process of life, of being a believer, being a follower, if we're not able to take up the cross and follow him and do what he commands? What's the use? Soul life has no benefit. It has no profit. And it does not please God. So here Jesus gives instructions to his followers on how to produce a full harvest, fruit that pleases God. He gives them instructions. He said, he who loves his life will lose it. And if we care more about our physical soul life than eternal life, we're going to lose, I said again, the real purpose for our lives. Love and hate might seem like they're strong words. And they are. But they're not words that we use. I, I guess that we use, they're used a different way in the word of God because they're talking, they're pointing to preferences. They're, they're talking about 
that self-life has to die in order to produce spiritual fruit. And until self-life dies, until it's broken, unless it goes through death, it cannot produce fruit, fruit that pleases God. See, saints, we got to stop being deceived. The enemy is still trying to deceive those who want to be followers of, the, of Christ. And first thing they say, well, you know, it doesn't take all that. You know, I want it, at some point I'll grow into that. Some point I, I'll get there. You know, there are those, well, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not there yet. But unless it goes through death, it cannot produce fruit that pleases God. And we got to stop being deceived by self-life, being deceived by soul life. Because, see, because it still seems like it's, gener it's generating good work. It still seems like, it, because you know what? See, self-life, soul life can produce talents. It can produce uh, gifts, knowledge, especially worldly knowledge. But self-life is no help to the work of God because it's unacceptable to him unless it is initiated, led, and carried out by the Holy Spirit of God. So self-life, soul power, soul power talents and gifts and knowledge. <laughs> he does not want us to draw from those. He doesn't want to draw our eloquence and our smartness from that soul self life. The soul life must go through a death so God can communicate his life to and through us to produce, produce his spiritual fruit his so when we lose the soul life in death the soul is saved from eternity god doesn't dislike the soul when we read that the body for example when we read about the body of sin that it must be destroyed he's not talking about destroying our physical body that's not what he's talking about he he he's not he doesn't mean that the parts of the body, the head and the eyes and the feet of the ears of the human body are destroyed. He means that we yield our members to God as instruments of righteousness. I yield my mouth, God, as an instrument of righteousness to you. I yield my hands, God, my physical hands. I, I can yield them to do good works unto you, God. I, I yield them as instruments of service, God, unto you. Most of us, when we work and on our jobs, we use our hands, we use, we use our eyes, we use our voice and our ears, we use those things. And, and, and so those, they are necessary. But whatever we do, he says, do it as unto the Lord. So we can, we can say, Lord, these things that I'm doing with these members of my body, God, because you get, so it means we just yield our members to God as instruments of righteousness. See, soul, soul life death is not that we become an object either without emotions we don't become an object with no feelings we we don't we don't become an object where we have no thought or we have no will again it is a yielding it that's what that death is i yield it over to the power of the holy spirit I'm created in the image and the likeness of God. It happened with Adam in the garden. 
Satan comes to him and says, oh, you know, you go ahead, you, you, you eat, but you're not going to surely die. But Adam died. You said, but his body, yes, his body, his soul, and even his spirit was still there, but his spirit died. It had no connection and able to be able to communicate with God anymore. So until Jesus came, until Jesus came, and at the time of Pentecost, and the spirit was renewed, that man once again could be born again by the spirit of God and receive the spirit of God. God gives us his spirit to operate in our lives. I said that last Sunday, not just to um, get a, 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 a time that we come together and we, 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 we're going to change this in a way not, that we come in and say, well, you know, I sure hope the presence of the Lord is at church today. I, I sure hope the spirit moves in here today. The spirit, if the spirit of the Lord is within you, if the spirit of the Lord is within me, then I don't need anyone else and you don't need anyone else to light your fire. The fire should already be inside of you. If you come on Sunday and you expect me just to be the one that lights your fire, you might get disappointed. We're all supposed to be lighting fires if you want to know the truth. So yes, sometimes we come in and our hearts might be heavy. If our hearts are heavy and we couldn't shake it off or get rid of it before we got to church, come in and go down to the altar and fall on your knees. I'm not going to stop you. And ask so, you know, I need someone to come and help lift me up because I couldn't get through this today. But for, for, for to come in and just expect it, oh God, you come in bringing, come in sharing, come in praising the Lord and see what happens. Oh, glory to God. So I said, soul life is not that we become an object without emotions or feelings or thought or will. It's a yielding. All parts are fully engaged, but they are renewed. They are revived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our emotions are still active, still active. Jesus showed emotions. He wept. He loved. He was sorrowful. He shed tears. He cried out. And it's the same with us. But I end today with the requirements. They still remain the same according to the words that we have received today from the word of God. And that is death. The requirement for us is death with Christ, that we may be resurrected in our daily life to bear fruit and to bear fruit that it will keep for eternal life. We all have heard about the fruit of the spirit, and I'm not going to go through it, but it is. It's the fruit that belongs to the spirit. It comes from the spirit because we're connected to the vine. <laughs> we are. We are. We're supposed to be connected to the vine. So we thank God that we are created in his image and his likeness, and every gift that he has is available to us if we are willing to surrender to receive. There is so much more in this about soul life that we have just sort of passed over. Okay. We, 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 and, and I said earlier, it needs really to be a teaching because it's so deep. It's so deep. Um, one of the things I think I've learned through, through this that has been a blessing to me is that it's something you can't fake. You can't fake it. Okay. In new Christians, 
we can we can <laughs> we can feel how can I say this? We can feel the 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 desire and the want in them if they have really dedicated their lives to the Lord. We can feel that desire in them. In older Christians, we understand that there may be something missing there that has not been taught or something that needs to be erased, eradicated, so the truth of God's gospel can be given and hopefully received that those old ways and those old thoughts are done away with and the truth of God's word is truly received. One of the things I found out too also, and then see a, a babe in Christ, a new in Christ is easy to teach, but an older one is hard. You know why? Because there have been so many interpretations and there have been so many people who have preached it this way and so many have given it this way and so many have said it this way and then we have to make a decision. Am I, am I going to go with what it says? But I found out the best way to get the answer is through the word of God. You can listen to someone over here all you want to, but go to the word of God and make sure that what is being said and what is being taught is the truth so that you don't be deceived and you don't be left out. That's what I found. The, one of the things I found is I had to go, oh Lord, let me, I hear this and I see this and, and, and all these things, like I said, I had to be able to separate it. See, the Bible says, and I think it's over in Hebrews, he said the, the word of God is, is sharper. You've heard it. It, it divides, it divides the spirit and the soul. Okay. It, there's a division. Those priests, they would go in there and they had to, to divide the, the, the marrow and the bone. They laid it open. They gave it open, open so we could see. Okay. Lord, I, I've got to see where I am with this. I got this, I got to really, really see where I am with this, Lord. And he has made it so that we know, we can know from his word because he divides it if it's spirit or if it's soul. If it's spirit or if it's self. So he fixed it so there would not be a problem there according to his word. And I give God glory in that. It's a wonderful thing. So I pray today as you go forth, you hold tight in all the things that are going on, all the violence and all the, the, the things that are going on around us, that you know that these things, some of them are happening because man has put his trust in the ministry of the world what the world can produce, what the world can give. But this is a time for us as saints to rise up and to declare, beginning with ourselves, declare, Lord, I, I am a born again believer. I am a born again believer and I have received the righteousness. We said in our, in our confession of faith, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And today, today I will worship him and I will worship him in spirit and in truth. God bless you. You continue to go this week and, Again, I say thank you to those that are 
or, or, or listening in or part or, or looking in today. And we want to close with a prayer. And you, you may have a, a prayer request that you want or you might have a need. Just because we're going through Zoom doesn't mean that we don't pray and we don't pray for one another. So if there's a need, we want to uh, take that need before the Lord. If there's a healing, we have elders and uh, elders, they may not be able to physically anoint you with oil for the healing of your body. But the Bible says we call for the elders of the church. And I want to know what well, Lord calling for the elders of the church and they anoint them with oil. And if they have committed any sins, they will be forgiven. But one of the things that happen is that when you really do an interpretation on that scripture, they need to ask for forgiveness. Amen. They need to, they need to be the ones to ask for forgiveness. They need to say, forgive me, Lord. And then the anointing from the head. And who is that head? That head is Jesus Christ. And that head, he has given it, he has given the anointing of the oil to the body. And then that body is standing there in agreement with the elders. And the elders pour their oil or anoint their head with oil, and that oil runs down for the healing to take place because that is the way that God has ordained it to be. He has. So if there's any sick among you, physically, they don't have a place to reach out and anoint you, but I, if you have oil, you anoint yourself, but believe that they are anointing you from your head and it's coming from the head. And they, and if you want to, this is a time if you have, you need healing. The Lord has provided healing for our physical body. How is it that the Lord will call, call us to, to do a work and then he wants us to be sick in our bodies? No. He's going to cause, a, he, he, wants our, he wants our physical bodies healed as well. When he, when he says, by his stripes, we were healed. We are healed. So it may be someone today, and you say, Lord, I want you to reach out in faith today and receive your healing. It may be a mental thing that's trying to attack you. It may be a physical thing that's trying to come against your body. But I stand firm today, and I believe that if you believe, if you will believe with us today, as these elders pray, that your healing is going to come. I believe that you're going to receive your healing. That's where I stand today. I'm not saying you might, but but He says first you confess, you confess your sin, Lord. You ask for forgiveness. He says, and the prayer of faith will do what? It will save. It will save. It will heal. It will heal. So is there one today? It, it removed the pride of someone knowing or someone thinking. Remove it. Don't even allow it to rise up. Don't even allow it to cross your mind today. Just lift up your hand and say, and you can even confess it if you want to. I, I need healing for my, my, my mind. I need healing for, my, for uh, a, a part of my body. I, I need healing, whatever. Believe God today. Believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is radiating through Zoom right now, even though we might be at distance. It's radiating. He, his power is right here with us because he's everywhere. God, he, the, the Spirit of the Holy Spirit is everywhere. 
So just believe and receive right now. Is there one today and, and heal? And we're gonna we're gonna take it one by one. Is there healing? Is there one today? And you say, I just need healing. In the name of Jesus, I need healing. Just raise your hands. Elders, get ready. Elders, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. If you have oil there at home, go ahead and anoint yourself. Give, I'll give you a minute. Go ahead and get your oil. And anoint yourself with oil. Oh, glory to God. Oh, I ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. It's the power of God. 